the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please be seated. Can you imagine the fear aboard that boat? You know they're on a ship in the middle of the sea, and the storm is raging, and they're about to lose the ship. They're about to sink. They start throwing things overboard to lighten the load. They know they're going to run aground, but the, the only hope of saving the ship is to keep it lighter so it can float, take less, less uh, depth in its keel. And the wind is blowing, and the rain is pouring, and it's being tossed about. Can you imagine the fear of those crewmen? And there's Paul saying, I told you, you should never have set sail in the first place. Mm. They didn't need to hear that. But he stood in their midst with confidence. And he said, Standing by my side is the angel of the Lord, and he has told me that none shall be lost on this boat, only the ship. The ship will be lost, but you will be saved. So run it around. What? You heard me? Run the ship around. And they did. And none were lost. Their lives were saved. And because of this drastic thing, they believed in what Paul was preaching to them. They believed his good news that Jesus had be, the God had become the man so that the people could believe in him and return to God. They believed in his good news. Sometimes it takes drastic action. Drastic action. Jesus wanted to go out and pray and he knew these people were following him. How many people? Thousands of people following him. They want to hear what he has to say. They're compelled by some force within them that says, listen to him. Find him out. Seek him. And you will learn something. You can be healed. You're going to hear from the Messiah himself. The chosen one. The Mashiach come. The son of David, the son of Adam, the son of God. We're going to hear him. We're going to see him. And he may even touch you and heal you personally. So these people heard of all the many signs and wonders. And they were there waiting for them. And people were pouring in from all the cities. And all the towns. And all the countryside. They were all just coming to see Jesus. And he taught them. Blessed are the poor and spirit, for they shall see God. Blessed are you when you hunger and yearn for righteousness, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you when you weep, for you shall know joy. Blessed are you who endure persecution and injustice for righteousness' sake. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. He taught them these things. And he also taught them love your enemies and persecutors. What? Yeah, love the tax collectors too. What? Are we supposed to love the Romans? Love the Romans too. I do. Love the Samaritans. I do. Love them all. I do. And so they followed him to hear this, to be inspired into infinity, eternity, by what he was saying. All those people 
could not, could not stay away. They were hungry. It was hot. You know how hot it is out here? Imagine no water, no food. Out in the desert, following this Jesus. Follow him. And so because they're following him and listening to him, how many days? He talked constantly. He healed them constantly. He was preaching to them constantly for a day and a half. Do you know how tired Jesus was? You say, Jesus gave it all on the cross, but I tell you, he gave it all to that multitude. He wrung himself out. Because they yearned for him. Jesus will give every drop of his energy and blood and blessing to those who yearn for him. I'm not going to be denied. I can wait. Those, wait. I know you've done 4,000 people ahead of me, but I'm 4,001. Will you please do one more? Just remember me. Yes, of course. And so, he fed them. We are told that he had great compassion for them. Compassion is that which understands their bodily needs, their spiritual needs, and their emotional needs. The gospel says they were like sheep without a shepherd. It doesn't mean that literally like they're animals. No, these are people made in the image and likeness of God. Each sentient being, each one of their own mind and free will, following Him, yearning for Him, and seeking Him, He will not deny them. So, well, to the apostles, you give them something to eat. What? What do you mean? Just pass it out. And as they pass it out, they, they kept on passing it out. What? Where did this come from? Just keep on going. Don't ask questions. Just keep on going. Until they were all filled. 5,000 men and their families. They counted the men. 5,000 men and their families. So how many people was that all together? The multitude. And he fed them. Because there is no order of difficulty in miracles. It's just as easy to feed 5,000 men and their families as it is to create a whole new galaxy. To heal a blind man. To cleanse a leper. To bring someone back to life. Or to convert a hardened soul. It might be possible to convert a hardened soul. It might be. By what means, by what method does Jesus seek to convert hardened souls? What are the hardened souls? Those scribes and those Pharisees, they surely didn't believe. They were there watching. Those soldiers, they were there watching. You think they paid any attention to this? Yes, they did. But because of the limitations of their own rules, they couldn't get out of those rules to accept what they were seeing in front of them. Those sailors in the boat with St. Paul. All they knew is that they had a prisoner. A prisoner was on board. One who was going, because he was a Roman citizen, was entitled passage to go see Caesar. He was going to see Caesar. Now remember that Caesar was touted as a god in the Roman Empire at that time. A god. A god. 
So here was St. Paul going to see the Roman God. But St. Paul says, I'm not following that God. I'm following my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm following the God who has revealed himself as Lord of all. I'm following Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is where I get my strength, my energy, my insight, my knowledge. He is the one that I follow. And as the ship was being tossed, and as it was being in jeopardy of sinking out there, have you seen that sea out there? I have been on that sea in that very spot where those people were running aground. I have been there. And I've been off the island of Malta where the second time he was shipwrecked. Shipwrecked twice. On the same voyage to Rome? Yes. Shipwrecked. I've been to those places. And I know that that part of the Mediterranean can go from very, very deep to very, very shallow in oh, it's like, it's like a cliff, underwater cliff. You see, these are underwater cliffs. And what happens is, is that the current that is going through from the Aegean Sea, from the, from the Atlantic Sea, comes through the Mediterranean, and it is a current that goes. The Aegean Sea, the Adriatic Sea, these are and the Mediterranean. There's a current and it, through time and volcanic action has created these cliffs underwater. And because the current flows, it is like a water that comes up from the bottom of the, from the bottom of the ocean comes up like this. And if there's a ship there, it's going to toss it. The waves are incredible. I happen to sail that in a submarine. And we were very well aware of those, under, um, those, those deep sea currents. And we were very well aware of the buoyancy in those currents that would lift us up. We were supposed to stop here at one depth and then suddenly we gained 200 feet. Come in there at 600 feet, and next thing you know, you're at, at 200 feet. What happened? The current has lifted you up. So we understand that St. Paul's ship ran into that, that very spot and was tossed and turned and the rain was coming. It was a storm at the same time. The current and the storm conspired together, as it were, to create a, an event that we are still talking about today. That it drove that little ship, those you ever seen those ships? I'm sure many of you have been down to the Mayflower, but when it's not the replica of the Mayflower that was down here, the Nina, the Pinta, or Santa Maria, the Santa Maria was down there. He said, those people crossed the ocean in that? Where are the orbs? It's a, bit, it's a little bitty ship compared to today's ships. And so those ships, if you see those ancient ships, no wonder they're finding so many on the bottom of the ocean. They're not very seaworthy, even though the trade routes were ancient. They tried to stay within three miles of the shore. Very seldom did they go beyond the side of land. They wanted to be close, and in case the storm came, they'd be coming to a safe port. But here they were, and here for their lives. And Paul declared, the angel of the Lord is standing by his we find ourselves even now in times where we know that something is going to happen. All you have to do is turn on the internet, turn on a TV set, going to be besieged with the world is 
world is coming to an end, the sun's going to go supernova, sunspots, X flares, N flares, flares, going to knock out all the communications. Uh, the Russians are going to come and do an EMP event on our, well, about the United States. We're going to lose all electric power. We're going to lose, they're taking away all the water from the Idaho potato farmers this week so we can't grow any potatoes. What? Yes. Idaho potato farmers can't farm anymore, even though they've got millions of dollars invested in planted potatoes. They've shut the water off. Who did? Well, not the government. Who told them they could do that? Well, no, we're just going to do it because we need to tell them. Shut off the potatoes. Shut them off. Maybe go to McDonald's and buy french fries. Those are Idaho potatoes. They won't have any. So, because of this arbitrary and capricious decision to cut off the water. Oh, no potatoes, no french fries, what? I'm going to die. We have other calamities. Other calamities that are happening all over the place. Riots. People marching in the streets. We have people that are just outside of themselves. This can't stand. This can't stand. No, you can't stand. No, you can't stand. No, I can't stand you. I can't stand you either. It's constant. Everybody in the world is at somebody else's neck. We are at the point where we know that our ship is going to go aground. The ship of this whole planet is going to go aground. We're going to be wrecked and our lives are in jeopardy. What is the answer? stand here before you, next to me is the angel of God. And he's telling, saying, you yearn for Christ. You seek him out. You find where he is and you go there. You Come after him, seek him, seek his knowledge, seek his wisdom, seek his blessing, seek his grace. You follow him. You have nothing to lose but everything except him. Come to him and none shall be lost. Seek him out. Not he's waiting to open the door. Because he has great compassion for us. Compassion is going to give you something to eat, and what you eat you will never hunger again. He's going to give you something to drink, in which you shall never thirst again. You shall always have him, and him alone, and him fully with God Almighty in your heart. And from that you will attain eternal life. What must we do, Lord, to we attain this eternal life? This I command you. Love one another as I have loved you. Love your own. Have compassion on the doubt and Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Have work, mercy on widows and orphans. Do the things of righteousness, and all shall be granted to you. Nothing shall be held back from you that you need. He will save you if you are able to be saved. I understand this, I believe this, I know this with all my heart. And here I am saying, why can't I save that poor person laying on the ground outside? Why can't I save the poor person who wants to use the back of the church for a toilet? Why can't I save the person who insists on doing myth or heroin or fentanyl instead of seeking the Lord God? Why can't I? 
I don't know. All I do know is that there were a lot of people living in Galilee at that time. There were a lot of people living in Jerusalem at that time. There were a lot of people living in Palestine and Samaria and all those regions, Jordan, at that time. But those ones who sought him out, those ones who seek him, those ones who know him, who yearned for him, they were fed. Compassion for them are the some that can't be saved. Yes. But not for lack of my trying. How about for you? Are the some that cannot receive this grace? Oh, because they're stuck in their own loops of self-destruction? It's one thing to be a victim. A victim is like the one who had leprosy on the side of the road. Remember the leper? Lord, have mercy on me. I know if you touch me, I can be cleansed. Touch you? The unclean? Jesus touched him. And the man was healed. He sought him out. Jesus, help me. Heal me. But the leper who chose to go out into the cave and lay down until he died, he died. The same opportunity exists. The opportunity that you have and have agreed to by your faith, by your baptism, by your, by your seeking of Him, you have received the miraculous insight of wisdom and understanding. You have been cleansed of your sins. You have been purified. Even though we all fall short of the glory of God, we are still seeking, trying, and, and doing our best to do His will. Imperfectly. But still, Jesus says to us, to you, to you, you give them something to do. Jesus appeared, appealed to the Father, and the masses were fed. But he did it at the hands of those apostles. He did it at their hands. He said, well, how much bread do you have? What? I want to add this little bit. We'll spread it out. And the fish. And so they did it, and it just kept on going until everybody was fed. And not only were they fed, but there were baskets and baskets and baskets left over. They gathered them up. What did they do with it? What did they do with the excess? They carried it along the way. And they dispensed it. So that wherever they went, they were giving out this food. Wherever they went, they were giving out this blessing. And everyone who received it was filled. This is your call. You are being, you are here right now at this moment because the Lord has called you right here and at this moment to receive this message from the angel of the Lord. Yearn for him. Seek him out. None shall be lost. Only the ship. Cities will fall by the wayside. Technology will fail. Machines will break. Ships will sink. Souls, people who believe and yearn and seek. You know God. The God who loves you. 
personal, infinitely, without measure. This grace is something that is yours to keep, yours to cherish, yours to embrace. Keep it, cherish it, embrace it. You are found in, you are bound by energy itself to share it. This is how we save the world. <laughs>